With the new Victoria 3 patch already out, there's a lot of changes to the game and we're gonna be covering these changes today as we'll be playing as the Japanese and we'll be fastly restoring the Empire of Japan. We're bringing Emperor back and we're making it in record time. I'm gonna do this into a three parts campaign. The first part, we restore the Empire and we build up our base economy, revamp our political landscape to open up the country and make it a strong economy. Then the second part if we get 5,000 likes on this video in the first week that it's out we'll be playing proper tall with the Japanese and in the last part we'll be expanding around the Asian bits with our main goal to maximize our production so we'll be doing this campaign all the way till 1936 also guys if you enjoy the content I would appreciate if you subscribe would really encourage me to make more videos like these in the future now the Japanese start with 12.7 million GDP and 31 million population as well as 102 units we do have a pretty struggling standard of living and it's likely gonna go even further down in the first part of the campaign but uh, don't let that fool you we're gonna skyrocket our standard of living after we fixed our political landscape the main issue that we have as the Japanese is that the shogunate and the samurai are extremely strong at the beginning and as such it's really hard for us to do any sort of reform so we start with traditionalism which offers 15% reduction in our market access price impact as well as 25% taxation capacity reduction. This is the worst economic system available in the game. We need to change it to quite literally anything else except industry band, obviously. We also need to switch from being an isolationist nation to protectionist mercantilism. Even free trade doesn't matter. Anything is better than isolationist. Land-based taxation also needs to be changed. We also need to get appointed bureaucrats for another 25% taxation capacity since right now we have 59,000 unrealized realize taxes because our taxation capacity is dog schnapple and we cannot just uh, simply spawn around government administration buildings because the cost of paper is going to skyrocket and as such we're not going to make the money out of building these government administration buildings how you fix the taxation issues as the japanese and as ching for that matter because it's a similar situation there is getting proper legislation and proper technology to help you out so let's slowly go through what our steps are going to be here and how we will be bringing back the emperor in just one year that's it we're gonna push for the emperor that means we're gonna have to have a civil war in the first year of the campaign so first let's go ahead and uh, set up uh, stock exchange as our first technology which offers an extra 10 percent market access price impact queue up romanticism right after so we have access to uh, agrarianism as an economic system which means we'll be able to switch away from traditionalism which is our starting economic system then we also queue up cotton gin lathe atmospheric engine and water to boil we want to go down the water to boiler path because we need to have either condensed engine pumps or at the very least atmospheric engine pumps before we start industrializing our country and by that I mean switching over to the iron frame buildings if we switch over too quick we will completely collapse our economy so we're gonna stay with the wooden building system until we've gotten the right technology to be able to make that switch so let's go ahead and uh, get some uh, construction sectors going we're gonna get five of them in uh, this state another five here and another four in uh, the uh, Kansai state and I mean four not five I like my numbers to be pretty round let's say we also need to get tools we don't have any tooling workshops so we're gonna get one in Kanto we're doing it in Kanto because we want to have a closed loop economy in our Kanto state this is also gonna be our capital in a while so we will have uh, iron mines logging camps tooling workshops and cotton plantations which are the four goods required to switch on over to the uh, iron frame buildings having all four of the goods in the state in which we have the construction sector means that we're not going to be impacted by the MAPI or market price access impact if all four of the trade goods are in the same state as the construction sector otherwise if we don't have say for example in uh, Chubu right we build construction sectors in Chubu and we don't have iron in Chubu but we will have the tooling workshop we will have uh, the uh, cotton plantation and we'll have the logging camps well then the iron that we're importing from the other states is going to be affected by the MAPI and as such is going to be more expensive when used by the construction sectors in Chubu. Later in the campaign, we'll try to reach as much MAPI as possible, but at the early phase of the campaign, it's extremely difficult to do so. So it's better to just to have closed loop uh, economic systems in your states as you're building your nation up. We want to switch to harvesting tools. We also want to switch to butchering tools. And more importantly, we want to switch to sawmills, but we need tools for all of that. So that's why we queued up the tooling workshop. We also need to queue up iron 
Diamond Mines in Kanto 1. Let's start with, and we're also going to queue up a uh, Coal Mine in Kyushu. So this is obviously required because iron is needed for the uh, rough iron tools production method of tooling workshops, which doubles the production of tools. As consequence, they used to go 30 for the first production method, 60 for the second, 80 and 110 as you progress in the campaign. We're also going to switch to cargo ports. This offers five infrastructure per level of cargo port. And let's go secular administration. We'll be switching over to the market squares to free churches. We will be switching to gas street lights, but we need to wait until our coal mine is done because we need to have coal for the gas street lights, of course. We're going to keep it on medium taxation for now. We're going to add a few uh, consumption taxes on services, luxury clothes, and porcelain. We're only adding a couple of these because we don't want to affect our population too much. Right now, our standard of leveling is 8.9, which is really bad. It's going to continue to go down for a while in the early part of the campaign. And these are particular consumption taxes primarily affect the upper and the middle strata, whilst the uh, lower strata is affected more by stuff like grain, furniture, basic furniture, clothes, liquor, tea, and all that stuff, right? So we don't want to put taxes on liquor. We don't want to put them on uh, tobacco tea, which affect the lower strata. We also have the honorable restoration uh, journal entry. This is not going to pop up until the shogunate is out of the government. So speaking of, let's go to our government. Right now we have a few legislations we can do professional army some type of home affairs and whatever the case it's nothing i'm gonna go for because i'm gonna reform my government get the samurai out bring the intelligentsia in now this means i have 26 uh, government which is acceptable it's not amazing but it allows me to go for homesteading which means i'm gonna piss the schnapps out of the shogunate we're doing this intentionally because we want to have the shogunate rebel against us before we do that though very important we're going to be editing out our army here click state so that it's easier to see which state the troops are from then we come over here and we're going to disband every single unit that is outside of our capital state that is the uh, Kansai state right now there you go so we're left with 20 units that is more than enough we're also going to be uh firing this guy over here retire commander and we're going to retire this guy as well both of them are in fact a part of the uh, shogunate or the landowners and that's going to bring the landowners to minus 19 approval we need to bring them to minus 20 approval in order to trigger the revolution so we're going to hire one more landowner general if i can actually see one. Oh my god nobody's from the landowner actually nobody's from the landowners oh my god people <laughs> come on <laughs> all right can we get a land oh my god what is up with this rng bro finally after a few freaking uh high rings we managed to get the uh, landowner that's bringing us down to minus 20 as such we're gonna get a revolution from the shogunate before all that happens though we're also gonna set up our declared interest i would like to go colonial but it's not a guarantee usually going colonial is a lot easier if we do it uh, with um, the landowners if they have some support or endorsement for colonial exploitation otherwise it's a little bit more RNG so let's just see how it goes in the campaign I would like to get some of the uh, African bits from the early part start slowly colonizing so I get access to rubber in the mid part of the campaign but then again I can also just get rubber by basically attacking nations in uh, Southeast Asia and in uh, parts of Africa in the later part of the campaign we're also going to use some of our authority points to uh, bolster the industrialists as well as uh, bolster the intelligentsia and we're going to keep it as is we need extra authority points in order to get the enactment time reduction actually i'm going to cancel the industrialist bolstering for now that should bring us up to 100 percent excess authority which means we get 25 percent enactment time reduction meaning we get our legislation passed significantly faster as consequence we get the same bonuses from uh, influence we get infamy decay from influence up to minus 25 or plus 25 infamy decay better yet plus 25 construction efficiency as well from bureau bureaucracy and trade route competitiveness from convoys so uh, always keep that in mind it's good to have some excess from your stats i'm also going to use the road maintenance for the extra state construction efficiency and infrastructure bonuses as required and as i am building stuff around my country so keep that in mind you don't need to follow along with this if you're trying to follow with the video but it does help out a little bit i guess better than nothing right and there you have it we have a massive revolution now what happens is most of the country is rebelling with the exception of of our capital state which right now is Kansai this will change to Kanto once we become the empire so we're just waiting for the revolution to trigger now so we 
can fight them because we've deleted all of our troops around the country with the exception of the troops in the capital the revolution is going to have a total of zero units and as such uh, we're going to be able to win the war extremely quick in the early part of the campaign almost forgot i need to build a secondary shipyard let's uh build that up in kyushu since we already have one over there and let's also improve relations with the russians and improve with the brits after we uh manage to open up our markets i would likely be joining one of the customs unions of russia or the british empire or france for that matter just so i can uh, profit from their market to grow my own gdp get some more uh money flowing through my country and then we'll leave that customs union when we're strong enough to survive by ourselves or we can just not join any customs union and play this out by ourselves that works as well in my opinion all right let's also establish a colony in sakhalin since we can colonize that from the beginning that is due to the fact that we start with the uh, frontier colonization which is unique to a few nations at the start i mean everybody can get it but some nations start with it is what i'm saying here including the americans including us and it allows us to colonize provinces that are not yet colonized and that are adjacent to our land so we cannot colonize for example africa because it is because it's not adjacent to any of our lands we can only colonize stuff that is adjacent to us which in our case is hokkaido and uh, sakhalin and that's pretty much it all right war is on let's go assign our units here pretty much everybody declares neutrality so we don't need to worry about foreign powers helping out our aristocrats here when they're rebelling and booyash nokinongs look at that zero units zero ships it's just a matter of how fast we can actually conquer all of these provinces now also i have to say i really like the fact that they added the uh, button to upgrade all particular units in our armies this was massively needed and it, i really hope that they don't stop improving the combat systems in the game because we i love the new system but i think that there still is a requirement for more improvement i would like to see more direct control over the units when fighting aside from you know just designated strategic objective and stuff i mean that's good but we need more than just designating strategic objective that's for sure all right so we won the war now we just gotta wait till they uh, reach minus 100 uh, war support so of course once this is done it's gonna take us a little bit of time to just uh catch up with our economy because we were in a massive revolution and it kind of destroyed us for a while but there you go we have the ninko restoration so this is named after whatever emperor you might have we start with this guy so it is called the ninko restoration we have the option of uh improving the support of the industrialist political strength of the industrialist or the intelligentsia I'm actually going to do the industrialists because uh, the industrialists have uh, the ability to open up our markets a little bit faster and I would actually like that. Let's also go back and set the colonization mechanics again. We are not building anything. Why are we not building anything? Because of the revolution, that's why. Let's uh, queue up again what we were queuing up before. It literally cancelled everything we were doing. Holy mother. It even cancelled the tooling workshop? Oh my god. We got to build that before we build the iron mines though. Alright, so now we also have uh, homesteading at 30%. We do need to get a better government going, so... The intelligentsia does have 30% clout, which is amazing, but it does mean that it's going to be significantly slower to pass this legislation. We'll wait until we do pass this legislation before we reform our government because we need to have a homesteading ASAP. The sooner we get this, the sooner we fix our economy. Homesteading is one of the uh, pillars of our political legislative body, and we also need to get uh, agrarianism right after homesteading if possible, as well as uh, landed voting or any of this. We actually have a lot of support for census suffrage if we manage to get census suffrage that would be amazing it would mean that we would be able to fix a huge amount of problems that we would otherwise have in our country and we'd be able to uh, get significantly more legislation passed by getting higher legitimacy from just the votes right also by having done this uh, war super early in the first year by the way of the campaign we finished that by th by the end of 37 we finished the civil war so by doing that so early allows us to just use the next 100 years to build up our country we don't need to worry about the honorable restoration and stuff and speaking of uh, we need to do three journal entries now we gotta industrialize japan retire the samurai and end the sakoku the way we do the sakoku one is we uh, stop being isolationist get rid of traditionalism we open up our borders getting rid of the samurai requires that we have a specific technology so it's all about researching tech and industrializing japan means that we have 70 percent of our urban centers at level five the way you level up your urban centers is you build up more stuff so the more buildings you have in a particular state the higher your urban center is going to be so that's just something that naturally happens as you build up your nation once we have those three journal entries done we will have the ninko restoration done as well now we don't have our units in our capital anymore so we will be disbanding
expanding our units because we need to have them in our capital in case another revolution is going to trigger let's go ahead and hire five units in kanto now we are currently without any soldiers whatsoever because remember our capital has changed to kanto when we restored the empire we also need to get some cotton plantations going in the states in which we have our construction sector so i'm going to queue up two of each here and for that matter i'm also going to queue up uh, some logging camps make sure we have this set to fishing trawlers logging camps as well a couple of these in all of the states that uh we have the construction sectors in and hey we passed the legislation to the consideration phase that is actually super lucky i mean to be fair when i live streamed this exact run by the way we passed that schnapps at eight percent so that was actually lucky and then we had really bad luck the previous run because when i live streamed it i had three turns before i actually got a good start to the campaign one of the turns i was stuck on one legislation for quite literally eight years and then it failed so that goes to show that with the new patch unfortunately it is significantly more rng the game than it ever was before and we just got our technology done that means we got an extra 10 percent market access price impact and we can also unlock protectionism free trade in the trade policies which is amazing means we can actually open up our borders now all right so it's going to take a while for the tooling workshops and the iron mine to uh get the production rolling but it will eventually get the production rolling so uh we also want to get appointed bureaucrats okay if we pass this in the next five years we get an extra 10 legitimacy from our country which is amazing we need the legitimacy and more importantly we actually do need to pass uh, appointed bureaucrats for the extra 25 percent taxation capacity to get more money and as such use that extra money to build up our country even faster as consequence and looks like the landowners and the samurai are rebelling once more but they don't have uh, enough support 68 uh, support radicalism for the um for the um, rebellion means that it's not going to trigger and we just went to the adoption phase so hopefully we pass this before they manage to hurt themselves once more right i'm gonna just do one barrack for now i'm gonna queue up the rest of that stuff at the bottom there because i don't really need an army for the time being i am a-okay it does mean that our prestige has tanked because of that and as such we're not a great power or any sort of a power anymore but the reality is that what really matters in the game is a gdp and we're not doing too bad gdp wise overall there you go we did pass homesteading which means we got some political strength for the farmers new production methods namely we have the homesteading production methods here namely we got the homesteading production methods for the uh, uh ranches livestock ranches and all of this and also let's uh switch on over quickly to the tools we need to get more tooling workshops though because one is not going to be enough that is for sure so i'm going to queue up one out click it actually two out click and we're going to out click also a in other iron mine which we're going to need not going to queue up the iron mine at the top but i'm also not going to queue it up at the bottom so let's say do this and get the iron mine done after the cotton plantations in Kanto. that should work now we're going to need to uh, reform our government a little bit which um is a little bit unfortunate because it means we're going to need to bring in some of the people that we ousted from our government back into the government or we might be able to do this with the Heyman. all right if we get the Heyman in what can we do can we do with them land dead voting we might be able to it's gonna piss off the samurai if we do wealth voting would be amazing but that's gonna really piss off the landowners though and the samurai mm. oh wait no i just realized i i need to do appointed bureaucrats before anything else we need to do that quickly actually 20 percent success chance for it at the start is not too bad it could be better but it's not too bad overall we also need to queue up a port for sakhalin so we have a connection to it with the rest of the country otherwise we cannot access any of its resources not sure if i mentioned but you should also get privately owned for your ownership uh, production method here it starts out with merchant guilds which means we get shopkeepers we want to switch to privately owned and then publicly traded whenever required whenever available because this is going to give us capitalists and give and capitalists offer more dividends uh to the uh, investment pool compared to the uh, shopkeepers do significantly more for that matter they offer interest group political strength Ooh, i'm gonna go for that because i actually need the intelligentsia to get a little bit more political strength bro i freaking hate this game sometimes we're on the adoption phase and our legitimacy and our legitimacy went down so bad that we are not getting any uh progress on uh, on this legislation so i don't know what to do because if i change my government even a little bit we're we're not gonna get any support for the appointed bureaucrats oh this is so bad <laughs> <laughs> and I also almost lost the war against Sakhalin. I had to recruit conscripts quickly because I didn't realize I had like no troops to fight against the one unit that they had. That was pretty embarrassing too. All right, I'm also going to queue up uh, a winery. Apparently, we already have one in Chubu. Let's queue a second one done. We're also going to get some rice farms done in Kanto. So I'm going to get seven rice farms. The reason for that is because Kanto already has a uh, Nara Bazin 10% rice farm throughput bonus, which is unique to 
this state so it's better to just build it up here at the start especially there's another unique one like that here for all agricultural buildings 10 percent throughput in uh, the kanto plains but now the big question is what are we gonna do boys what are we gonna do no <laughs> i really don't know what to do now this is really bad actually if i go buddhist monks and Heyman, i think unfortunately they're gonna cancel my legislation aren't they oh oh no they're not they're not gonna cancel legislation we did go down to 35 success chance but better than canceling the legislation hopefully we managed to adopt this if we get appointed bureaucrats it's gonna fix so many issues in our country and now let's queue up some more stuff i want to get three uh, livestock ranches because we're gonna be able to use the livestock ranches to get some fertilizers when we have the production method available when we have the technology for that and i'm also gonna get a few basic uh industries going like uh three more clothing manufacturers or textile mills three more furniture manufacturers for that matter as well queue it up over in uh, chubu and we got the the legislation which look at that it boosted up our income by ten thousand instantly which is huge man oh we can do this as well oh If we get agrarianism and we already have... Wait, what? Property... What? We got support for the property women? No shot. <laughs> That's so early, bro. What? All right. Uh, whatever the case, let's uh, put this at the end of the queue. And let's uh, get some more construction sectors going. Let's get another four of them in Chubo, I guess, for now. Because we can definitely sustain this uh, with our current economic output. This technology also helps out massively since uh, now... Ooh, that's good as well. Technology spread for production. Hell yeah, brother. All right. So uh, now that we got that tech, we can change from uh, handcrafted furniture to lace, which offers a lot more furniture. Same goes here. Dye workshops helps out a lot. And before we switch to the uh, leaded glass, we do need to have some lead production. Because remember, guys, we are an isolated nation still. And if we don't have a particular trade good and we're needing that particular trade good, it's going to uh, give us massive debuffs. We do not want those massive debuffs whatsoever. Um, Let me go for this as well. So yeah, before I do that, I need to get a lead mine. Let's see where we can get some lead mines. We can get 36, 24, 30, 45. I guess I can build my my lead production in Tohoku so that means we can do lead mines here and then we can start building up some glass works here as well right now most of my glass works are in Chugoku Shikoku well actually since we already have two of them Shikoku maybe we can build a lead mine in Shikoku instead oh we don't have lead production there never mind that's fine now we'll keep it in Tohoku for now and we'll just build our own lead production uh, glass production in Tohoku I just noticed that I'm massively lacking wood so I'm gonna need to queue up a lot more wood here let's get three of them in a uh, Kanto and let's get another three over in Kansai for that matter. It might not be enough also, so we're gonna get a few more around the rest of the country. We essentially need to max out our wood uh, logging camps before we even switch to the uh, iron frame buildings, because wood is gonna be required throughout the entire playthrough, for sure. It's one of the most vital goods you're ever gonna need in this campaign. I wanna point out that I'm building more and more construction sectors as I um, grow in my economic output, right? And I'm also gonna build up 10 universities in Kanto, so we start catching up with technology technology we are really far behind with tech and it is absolutely time that we get this done cancel the emergency relief there as well for now and we're close to getting agrarianism that is going to be the biggest most impactful economic uh, change in our country not only because of the uh, ability to get more market access price impact but that taxation capacity and we also can subsidize everything aristocrats give more investment pool contribution farmers give 50 percent more as well so it's really going to pave the way for modernizing our society completely now we can also get sulfide pulping which is great because it's going to produce more paper but we do need to get um some sulfur produced we right now have no sulfur produced anywhere in our country so we're going to queue up a uh, sulfur mine right over in kyushu i guess or actually you know let's get it in chugoku since um we don't have much going in chugoku right now anyway and then we can build our own paper mills in chugoku we already have two so that's perfect we can build three more in chugoku we have this as our main paper producing uh, state you guys want to see a magic trick legislation is passius maximus come on do it there you go okay we got it <laughs> I'm a wizard, yo. I'm a wizard. All right, let's check it out. So we're down to 55,000 in unrealized taxes. Not amazing, but better than the 70 we were at before, right? And we're getting 103,000 with the medium taxation, which would translate to 120,000 with high taxation. But we're not going to high taxation. We're keeping it on medium for now. We do have some problems now with our bureaucracy. So we will have to um, build some, some more bureaucratic buildings as consequence. University throughput or 2.5K for empiricism. 
athleticism. Let me check. So university throughput is for five years only. I think I'm going to go for the flat bonus to empiricism because that way we unlock this. There you go. Now we have it. And it means we can uh, unlock constitutional reform party, dialects and psychiatry technology. So we will queue up uh, dialects once we've researched everything here, which is currency standard that is in the queue and the banking afterwards as well. Oh, we have uh, actually one million loyalists we can get once we enact professional army, you say. So let's see what else we can go here for. We could go for the dedicated police force, which would get rid of the political strength that the landowners are getting from that. But since we do have that uh, support for the professional army, let's go for it. And then after we can do dedicated police force once we've gotten the professional army going. And we do have this government administration building that was almost finished. Let's bring it up at the top of the queue to get some uh, bureaucracy from it. Okay, we got atmospheric engine pumps, which means we can get all of these production methods changed. Quite literally, it doubles the amount of uh, mineral outputs that we have. Check it out, from 20 to 40 iron. So that does mean we need more coal mines now because uh, this pr particular production method actually uses coal. We're going to queue up a second one in Kyushu. Hopefully that's going to be enough for now. We're very close to starting our switch on over to um, iron frame building production methods. Get a couple more cotton plantations as well going. And I'm going to accept uh, state Shintoism. This makes Shinto our official religion. We got 14 million people following that, whilst the other 30 mil 20 million are not following it. I wish you actually got some bonus from this. Like, I like it. It's nice, flavorful, but it offers nothing. Nothing at all. Even our leader is still Mahayana, our old religion. So I really wish they revamped this and they actually gave some bonus to this aside from just clicking a button for no reason. In any case, I think it might it might even be a debuff because having majority of our population not follow the official religion can end up with getting them discriminated if we go for state religion as our legislation. And I do have to give a good part as well though, the fact that we have the modifiers changed here, which shows how many years it's left for and what they offer. This is, this is good. This is a really great change. I'm glad they added this here. Makes it so much easier easier to actually see what's going on in your country. Bro, this is literally just my luck here. We've been getting success increase, but we haven't been uh, switching to the adoption phase. It's quite literally going for a siege in EU4, and we have been getting stuck on one particular siege tick continuously without actually getting any freaking success chance for it. Can we just get this freaking legislation so I can do more laws after, please? And to add extra insult to the injury, we go up to 100% chance. We had 95, now we go up to 100. Just just as long as it doesn't go to the next phase, of course. Freaking hell, man. How do we not advance to the next phase with 95% is beyond me, bro. I swear. Come on, let's get water to boilers, please. Hell yeah, buddy. All right, cool. So now we can do this. We can change to condensed engine pumps for all of our production methods here. And it's going to considerably increase the uh, need for coal and for tools. So that's why I uh, built a few more tooling workshops. I'm probably going to need to build even more tooling workshops, though. I highly doubt that this is going to be enough. And for that matter, I think I'm going to need some more coal mines so let's queue up one more coal mine for now we surprisingly also have a ton of support for uh per capita taxation initially this is going to uh, lower our income a little bit but as we progress in the campaign this will significantly increase our income afterwards all right so now i'm getting uh dialects which allows me to change my university production method to the philosophy department which offers more innovation and in, uh, return and i've also queued up uh, central banking to help out with our economy as well oh actually didn't queue it up i need to queue it up as as well as central archives and uh, railways we don't have much innovation though and we can have up to 120 max so we're gonna build up more universities as well oh my god what is up with these uh oh progresses by one phase don't mind if i do we're going for religious schools i've also unfortunately had to bring back the landowners into my government because otherwise i was going below 20 legitimacy so i'll try and see if i can reform my government with the with the landowners and try and go for the uh, landed voting somehow take advantage of the extra legitimacy we get from them Ooh, we got protectionist freaking agitator oh brother i love you please do your job and get me some protectionism i need some protectionism in my life boy i need it i need it badly i know what i'm saying here yep all right, we're also getting uh, chemical pants so we can uh, switch over our production method from the simple farming to the soil enrichment farming. We could do it now, but if we do that, we will not have enough um, fertilizers to go around and a 500 fertilizer shortage is massive. It would in fact destroy our economy if we don't have some fertilizer plants first. Our economy is actually suffering a little bit here. Uh, we're gonna need to seriously build up more government administration buildings. We got a good 26% tax waste right 
right now. But that is mostly because of the uh, various uh, events we got when we uh, enacted protectionism, which we just enacted. So that's pretty awesome, actually. Let's uh, let's check now. What do we need? Uh, Ensakoku. Closed borders. Okay, so we need to open up our borders as well. That is going to be more difficult than I can imagine. Although, we could technically go for migration control, which is technically open borders. It's not closed ones, right? So we could get the uh, Heyman Trade League and the uh, Petite Bourgeoisie to do that. So yeah, okay, not impossible. Now with protectionism enacted, we can start trading with other nations. So all of these uh, shortages that we have are going to be easily fixed now. But yeah, look at that. Three years minus 10 bureaucracy, another minus two bureaucracy. What the hell is going on here, man? <laughs> We're also going to attempt to get per capita taxation. This is attempt number two. We do have a lot of support for it, but success is only 12%. So uh, debatable on the support, really. Whoa. Britain. Britain, what? Hell yeah, don't mind if I do, boys. How about you accept me in your customs union as well? We probably could join it uh, if we just increase the trade volume between our two countries. And unfortunately, we have to cancel this again because we went below the legitimacy threshold and we had to reform our government once more, sadly. I feel like uh, changing our taxation law is going to be the toughest bit out of this whole freaking campaign, unfortunately. And speaking of trade, let's uh, set up our trades. Let's go uh, import some wood or whatever we need. We need grain? Really? Am I that bad with grain? What is my grain at? Grain is not that bad. What are you talking about? Why am I importing grain? I only have a shortage of eight grain and then balance. That's not too bad. Furniture, on the other hand, is actually an issue. All right, we can get a trade agreement with the Brits, which should help out a little bit because uh, they are right now our main trading partner. And hopefully by getting our relations up from that, we can also join their trade union afterwards. Hey, we got railways. Hails to the yes. Okay, cool. So now with railways done, we're going to need to uh, start building up some of these because we need the infrastructure from those railways. Starting with Kansai, apparently. That should be our first. And Hokkaido, for that matter, too. And we're going to need what's adjacent to the railways, which is motor industries. To build that bad boy up in Kanto as well. And then that means we're going to need steel mills also, which we don't have. And we also are going to need to start uh, industrializing our country, which we haven't done yet. So there's a lot of things we need to work on right now. But we've got a pretty decent start. We've uh, changed all of our legislation. Look at what it looks like right now. Protectionism, agrarianism, homesteading, dedicated police, religious schools, appointed bureaucrats, professional army. So way better than what we started with. Our economy is not doing too bad also. With medium taxation, we're at 115. So it's decent. GDP wise, we're between the Prussians and the Americans. But it's only 1856 and we already restored the empire. And we're definitely making a lot of progress towards becoming a global player. So I hope you guys enjoyed this first part where we tried to explain a little bit more why going empire first is the best option and starting to do our playing toll bit. Now, if we get the like all, we'll do the second part where we get massive amounts of economy, revolutionize our country and min max the snaps out of every single population living in the Japanese islands. And hey, until the next time, check out this amazing pressure run. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. 